I'm back. This, this one will be much faster um, because I didn't actually take very long to write it. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's talk about circuit breakers. Uh, and basically a circuit breaker, and they, they actually work about like this, uh, even when you're talking about the, the software engineering version. Uh, oddly enough, they named it after those because that's how they work. So the problem that we're solving when we're using a circuit breaker is that sometimes things fail uh, expensively. Um, especially rem calls to remote services. You think about it like this, if you're gonna make calls with like some HTTP over JSON service, which is what you should be doing, uh, sometimes <laughs> that's really slow to time out. It could take like, depending on the way your library is configured, like three seconds, 10 seconds, like a really long time. And especially if you're like trying to serve uh, maybe your own web request to people who are making a lot of requests to all your unicorns or whatever you're running, you can tie up all your threads just waiting on these things to time out. Uh, and and, and those, those timeouts are usually highly correlated, by which I mean they all happen at the same time roughly. If the server is down, the server is down for all of your requests, not just for one of them. Um, so we want to fix that. We, we, we can't avoid the failure that's going to fail. If someone kicked the plug out of the server, we're not getting a response back. But we can at least fail cheaply. We cannot wait 10 seconds. Uh, we, we, we can wait maybe a small amount of that time first and then uh, 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 just say like, oh, that thing's broken. We're going to back off and wait a while. It, it, we can trip the circuit breaker, if you will. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, enter the circuit breaker. But let us not forget the theme. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically what I just said. Circuit breakers are going to wrap your dangerous code uh, for some value of dangerous code, whatever you got. Usually, like I said, it's that remote service call. Uh, and, and if that code fails too much for some value of fails, or it times out too much for some value of too much, uh, then the circuit breaker trips and it starts failing like immediately. It just like just quits. Uh, and it'll just immediately raise an error, say like whatever you want it to say. Like this has failed too often, too recently. Um, it waits a little while. You can configure it. And, and then maybe it'll reset. It'll try again. They call this kind of the half open state. Uh, and if it's successful, then it goes completely closed. Uh, a note about terminology. I meant to put slides in this, but I forgot. These are based on, like I said, actual electronic, uh, electronic, electrical engineering circuit breakers. And, and when a circuit is open, it means you've kind of lifted the thing up, and now the current won't flow. It's the opposite of a door. When a door is open, you can go through. When a circuit is open, the circuit is broken. It doesn't work anymore. When the circuit is closed, you put the little gate back down, and now it works. It's like you're just not like a door. So that trips me up all the time. Uh, yeah, it's like a bridge, exactly. So, look at some GitHub. Uh, I have a, oh, hmm, I'm gonna have to cancel out of this. This might work. Uh, oh, that's definitely not relevant. Here we go. Hey, here we go. Uh, I can make this bigger. I can't see this on my actual screen. That's not working. So I'm hitting the wrong button. Circuit breakage by some guy. Um, so I picked this, uh, this gem completely at random amongst the many circuit breaker gems that are out there. Um, and mostly what I want to show you here is just what, what a circuit breaker might look like in practice. Uh, wow, these are terrible colors for a projector. Um, basically, Oh, this, are you getting glare? Yeah, we can see. Can you see better on this one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's two screens, and the people in the back actually have those too, yeah. Hmm. Well, so the, the, the oh, bl blinds, awesome. Uh, the basic idea here, as you can see, you're, you're going to create the circuit breaker with some sort of logic, and it's any kind of dangerous logic that is dangerous, right? And you're going to give it a failure threshold. And when we say failure, like, what does that mean? Um, it can mean anything you want. But probably what it means is that either this code is going to raise an exception or it's going to time out. Uh, um, you could say if it returns null or whatever. Like, you're going to write this, so you can make it, do, make it work however you like. Uh, but in this particular example, a failure means it times out or raises an exception. You say, how long is it going to stay flipped? How long before we, we try to reset it? And uh, how long are we willing to wait before we just call this thing failed? And in this case, I'm going to say 500 milliseconds, half a second. If it takes longer than that, that guy's not coming back. Um, then you just say breaker.call, pass in whatever args you want, and those will get passed to this block that you defined up here, this proc, I should say. Uh, and then it could raise either a circuit open if it's fa it failed too many times recently, or a circuit timeout if it, uh, if it exceeds 500 milliseconds. Uh, and that's basically circuit breakers. 
Um, they're going to protect your code and allow it to continue on quickly and get right back to the business of answering requests without waiting for a bunch of very, very slow timeouts. I gotta hit the play again from over here. This would have been funnier if it was snappier, but 